Despite what many Etsy gurus may be teaching on YouTube, starting a successful Etsy shop is insanely hard. It's not a passive income, nor can you just set it and forget it. But isn't that a good thing? I mean, if it was easy to become instantly successful, everyone would be doing it. So while starting a successful Etsy shop isn't as easy as just listing products, there are a lot of simple steps that many sellers totally miss when they first start selling. Steps that could have the potential to completely change your performance in the marketplace. So if you're an Etsy newbie, or if you're thinking about starting an Etsy shop, I'm here to help you get a running start. For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Elf Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And over the last 12 years, I've dedicated my life to understanding the mechanics of Etsy and its shoppers by analyzing data and proven buyer psychology. And in that time, I've discovered a few secrets that most viral shops have in common. When it comes to success on Etsy, you may notice that some of the biggest sellers have very little branding very little SEO, and some of them don't even have the best photos. Any sane seller is likely asking, how? How can these sellers with so little everything be selling so much? The answer is listing quality and customer and marketplace experience. These are scores that Etsy gives each listing and each seller based on several different factors that I cover in this SEO video. But the short answer is these shops have been around for a while, which has made their listing and shop quality basically untouchable. And the unfortunate thing is you're not going to be able to get away with a lack of branding, bad photos, or bad SEO because your listing quality scores and shop quality unfortunately are not untouchable. You have to hit the ground running in order to win this race. And with today's steps, hopefully the process gets you off to that running start. You may have a great idea for a product, but if you don't have an ideal customer in mind for this product, you aren't going to be able to accurately target them and you aren't going to be found by them. And big brands fail at target customer identification all the time. For example, a few Two years ago, two brothers in Germany developed a product that they thought would revolutionize women's health. After living with a female roommate, these brothers felt that women needed a way to easily dispose of feminine hygiene products. Their solution? Pinky gloves. Pre-packaged pink latex gloves that women could wear when disposing of sanitary products. Needless to say, these brothers were met with major backlash from women who had no need for these pointless and wasteful products. Ultimately, the brothers issued a public apology for not doing market research before developing their products and marketing, which is a brilliant example of why target customer research is so important. For your own business idea, start by breaking down your ideal customers into demographics. Is your jewelry for Christian women ages 45 to 65? Is your decor for college men ages 19 to 23? Is your target customer an animal lover? Are they health conscious? Do they run a busy household? Define who they are, what they look like, and what they value most. Everything you do for your business, from making your items to your marketing, should cater to this person. Perform this step and you'll already be miles ahead of these guys. <laughs> when it comes to business, your branding is the theme song of your shop which means that your logo, fonts, and brand colors should all reflect your ideal target customer. If this is your target customer, your branding likely doesn't look like this. If this is your target customer, your branding likely doesn't look like this. And if this is your target customer, your branding likely doesn't look like this. And that's not to say that grandma can't totally be into gaming, but she's likely not going to make up the majority of your target audience, nor will she be turned off by your super cool gamer branding. So focus on appealing to the majority. Your branding should be obvious from your storefront, on social media, through your product packaging, and on your website if you have one. 
Speaking of websites, if you don't have one already, I recommend buying the domain name associated with your brand right away. Owning a domain doesn't mean that you need to have a website of your own, but it does mean that no one else can buy the .com associated with your brand out from under you. This happened to me back in 2013 when a company purchased the name associated with my business right out from under me. In fact, some businesses make their money by holding domain names hostage inflating the price in the thousands. So buy your domain now. It'll likely cost you less than $20 a year, and you can typically redirect this domain name right to your Etsy shop. And while you're at it, you may also want to claim all social media accounts associated with your brand name as well, even if you don't plan to use them. It's better to have them rather than risk losing them. I recommend using brandsnag.com to do this because it will quickly show you all available social media accounts related to your business name. If you ignore everything else from this video, please don't ignore this phrase. A crappy photo of a great product equals a crappy product in the eyes of your customer. It's the difference between this and this, this and this, this and this. You don't have to have an expensive light setup or even a crazy camera. Take your photos with your smartphone near a window with a cheap diffuser from Amazon to accomplish beautiful and even lighting every time. And be conscious of your backgrounds and props. The less busy, the better on Etsy. So try to keep it simple and let your products speak for themselves. If you need a little help with this, I highly recommend checking out my friend Christina Nicole's channel because she specializes in expert product photography using your phone. Definitely a great step for those who want to save money and shoot beautiful product photos. If you're an Etsy newbie, SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. These are basically the road signs that we're going to use in order to help shoppers find your listings when they shop on Etsy. Your SEO is designed to help Etsy understand who should see your products, making it absolutely essential to master if you want to build a successful shop. And since Etsy SEO takes a bit more time to explain, I've linked my free Etsy SEO toolbox of mini courses both in the card up here and in the description down below. Yes, Etsy is a lot of hard work, but by taking action on these steps early on in your journey, you're more likely to hit the ground running as you start your business. Because success on Etsy isn't a destination. It's a lifelong journey of growth, education, and experimenting. Until next time, Pookie.